So we've been testing Intel's new Core Ultra 200 series CPUs from top to bottom, and now we're finally getting to power efficiency, power consumption, and heat. This was going to be our last Air Lake video for at least a little while, but now Intel is saying their new CPUs don't perform as expected and that they're going to fix it uh, either with a BIOS update or maybe some kind of software patch. So that means we're going to have to test our Core Ultra 5 245K and Core Ultra 9 285K again at some point. Woo. So much fun. But thankfully, the power and thermal data that we've collected should still be valid for the Core Ultra 200 series even after this fix comes out. When Intel marketed the Core Ultra 200 series, one of the primary boasts was that Air Lake was much more efficient than Raptor Lake. In fact, it was pretty much the first thing Intel talked about in the announcement presentation. Specifically, Intel claimed Air Lake has the same performance as 14th gen Raptor Lake, but at half the power. To put that another way, Intel was claiming a doubling in efficiency, a 100% boost. Now, twice the efficiency in a single generation isn't actually unheard of. Back in 2019, AMD launched its Ryzen 3000 CPUs based on the Zen 2 architecture, and that claimed a 100% boost in efficiency. And that was back when AMD was developing its architectures in a cave with like a box of scraps. And the bar isn't very high for Intel since Raptor Lake uses the 10 nanometer node, now called Intel 7. Uh, this process has existed in various forms since at least 2019, and its current iteration was launched with 12 gen Arter Lake, so I mean, it's pretty old at this point. So a doubling of efficiency isn't so much a shocking leap, as it is something Intel really ought to do in order to keep up with AMD, especially since uh, Raptor Lake CPUs are power hogs. Considering Air Lake has disappointed on price, performance, and potentially platform longevity, you're probably expecting to be disappointed when it comes to efficiency as well. Well, I'm not going to spoil the surprise too much, at least not more than I already have with the title and the thumbnail. For these benchmarks, we tested our 285K and 245K chips on the LGA1851 Testbench, which is equipped with ASRock Z890 Lightning, 32GB of DDR5 memory, clocked at 6000MHz, an RTX 4090, and Corsair's H170i IQ Link Cooler. We tested the Core i9-14900K and Core i5-14600K on our LGA1700 Testbench, which uses ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite, 32GB of DDR5 set to 5600MHz, and the same RTX 4090 and Corsair Cooler used on the LGA1800. GA1851 test bench. Since we are testing power and thermals on these CPUs, each model is set to their default TDP. We made sure all sorts of performance enhancing settings were off, and that the power limits were according to Intel specifications. Additionally, we also disabled application optimization on all CPUs. To measure power and thermal data, we used HWinfo64. We're aware that hardware-based reporting rather than software-based reporting from apps like HWinfo64 is technically more accurate. However, HWinfo64 is more than good enough, and honestly, we don't have the budget to buy power and temperature monitoring equipment yet anyways. With all that out of the way, let's have a look at the results. In terms of efficiency, we're seeing both the 2A5K and the 245K at the top, with roughly 50% more efficiency than the 1400K and the 14600K respectively. If you might recall, that is significantly far from the 100% more efficient figure that Intel claimed. When plotted on a line graph, we can see each CPU's effective power limit, and I do say effective because the 2A5K's power limit of 250 watts was clearly unnecessary. The chip was hovering around 210, 220 watts for pretty much the entire test, and similarly, the 245K didn't really hit its power limit of 159 watts either. By the way, if you're wondering what those big dips are, that's Cinebench loading up another round of rendering. You can see the 1400K technically finished first, but only completed four renders, while the 2A5K did five renders. This is the average temperature each CPU hit, and unsurprisingly, the order is the same we saw for power consumption. Power directly translates into heat, so this is what we should expect. What's particularly interesting is that the 1400K, even though it's using a cooler with a 420mm radiator, got fairly close to that 85 to 95 degree danger zone where thermal throttling can start. Meanwhile, the 2A5K is at a much cooler, much more comfortable 75 degrees Celsius. Now, when the single threaded part of the benchmark, both the 2A5K and the 245K saw about a 100% efficiency boost, just as Intel claimed. The 2A5K's power consumption was even lower than that of the 14600K. The 14900K consumed nearly double what the 2A5K did. The temperatures are more moderate this time, but it's still clear that the Core Ultra 200 series is cooler than 14th Gen Raptor Lake. First off, for our game benchmarks, we have Total War Three Kingdoms at 1080p, and already the 2A5K is significantly ahead of the 1400K, with roughly 50% better efficiency. The 245K was also about 50% more efficient than the 14600K, though this is a little lower than Intel's claimed doubling of efficiency, so keep that in mind. The 2A5K consumed pretty much the same amount of power as the 14600K when we look at the line graph, while the 245K hovered around 50 watts or so. Meanwhile, the 1400K is all the way up there by itself, which is not a good thing. 
In terms of heat, the 14600K and the 245K did about the same. The 285K was a little hotter, and the 14900K exceeded 60 degrees. You're gonna see a lot more results like this, by the way. At 1440p with the Ultra preset, the 285K inches to 60% greater efficiency, but that's still short of 100%. The 285K actually consumes less power than the 14600K here, which is pretty good considering the 285K is a much faster chip. Funnily enough, all of the CPUs actually consume less power at 1440p with the Ultra preset than they did at 1080p with the Low preset. These charts do a pretty good job of illustrating how CPU behavior in games isn't exactly intuitive. The temperatures here are similar to what they were at 1080p, but the 14900K did get slightly cooler while the other CPUs got a tad hotter. In Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p, the Arrow Lake CPUs register a little over 50% more efficiency than the Raptor Lake chips, still short of that 100% more efficiency claim though. Because each benchmark run for CS2 is pretty different, like even to the point where like the amount of time we take on each run can be pretty different because we're literally just playing the game, each round can last for between a minute, two minutes, maybe even 30 seconds. Usually we delete those. Anyways, uh, the data here uh, simply wouldn't be useful, so we're not showing a line graph for that. We're skipping straight to temperature, and when we look at it, we can see that the 14600K is a little bit cooler than the 245K and the 285K, and that the 1400K is significantly hotter than all the other three. With more intense settings, we're still only seeing about 50% more efficiency on the Core Ultra 200 models. And once again, the 14900K is by far the hottest chip, while the other three are about in the same ballpark. In Civilization 6, we're finally seeing the 2A5K hitting that doubling of power efficiency, just barely. The 245K though is just a touch above 60% compared to the 14600K, which is still respectable. From this chart, we can see the 2A5K was efficient in spite of it consuming around 125 watts throughout the test, well above the 245K and the 14600K, and not too far off of the 14900K. However, the 2A5K is super fast in Civ 6, which is why it could achieve this amount of efficiency. The 14600K manages to be the coolest yet again, with the 2A5K and 245K in the middle, and the 14900K in dead last. Again, the 2A5K is just about twice as efficient as the 14900K, and the margin between the 245K and the 14600K is still about 60% in favor of the Arrow Lake part. The power consumption at 1440p with the Ultra settings is pretty much the same as it was at 1080p with minimum settings, which isn't all too surprising. There is a bit of a gap between the two Arrow Lake CPUs this time, but the 14600K and the 14900K continue to be the coolest and hottest respectively. In City Skylines 2, the 2A5K is nearly 80% more efficient than the 14900K, a little short of that 100% claim. The 245K only registers an improvement of a little over 50% compared to the 14600K. We once again see that the 2A5K behaves a lot like the 14600K, while the 14900K and the 245K are in their own leagues. The 14900K got pretty hot at 66 degrees, which is fairly high for a gaming workload. The margins haven't really shifted at 1440p between any of the CPUs, we're still seeing an 80% improvement for the 2A5K and 50% for the 245K. Despite City Skylines 2 being a CPU intensive game, power consumption actually decreased after increasing the settings, like in Total War. The 14900K just barely avoided the 60 degree mark, but it's still running pretty hot here. In Dota 2, once again the 2A5K is only 80% more efficient than the 14900K, just barely missing that 100% target. The line graph reveals that Dota 2 is pretty lax on the CPUs when the settings are at the minimum, though the 1400K had to exceed 100 watts to deliver the performance it did. All CPUs ran fairly coolly, but the 1400K continues to be the hottest overall. Interesting though, the 2A5K is cooler than the 245K by a full degree. We saw this in cities as well, but that was only at 1440p. At 1440p with maxed out settings, the 2A5K is 90% more efficient than the 14900K, very close to what Intel advertised. For once, power consumption increased with more intensive settings, though not by very much. With similar power draw, we're looking at similar temperatures. The 2A5K is yet again cooler than the 245K. Perhaps this is because the 2A5K has more e-cores to handle background tasks, allowing heat to be spread across the chip a little more evenly. In Dirt 5, we're again seeing the 2A5K achieve 90% more efficiency, which is good but still under Intel's claim of 100%. The 14900K is clearly pushed really hard in Dirt 5, consuming almost twice the power the 2A5K did. The 245K manages to stay under 60 watts, the lowest of the four, but not too far away from the 14600K at a little above 80 watts. No surprises here when it comes to the thermal data. The 14600K is back on top like it has been for most of these benchmarks so far. At 1440p, the 2A5K is twice as efficient as the 14900K, which has only happened in one other game so far. Power consumption with the ultra high preset at 1440p isn't as consistent as it was with the low preset at 1080p, which probably helped the 2A5K hit that 100% efficiency mark. The 14900K was particularly hot this time, over 14 degrees hotter than the 2A5K. In Minecraft, the 2A5K was actually the most efficient CPU of all, even more 
than the 245k and was also twice as efficient as the 1400k. You can see, however, that every CPU didn't consume much power relative to other games. The 285k and especially the 245k were routinely below 40 watts though. The 285K manages to keep cooler than the 245K yet again, despite consuming a little bit more power. Unfortunately for the 285K, its efficiency slides to 80% better than the 1400K when we switch to maximum settings and 1440p. On the other hand, the 245K did improve its efficiency relative to the 14600K with an 80% improvement. The graph here looks like a roller coaster, which is probably due to the nature of the benchmark rather than Minecraft's inherent behavior. The 285K remains the coolest of the four chips, with the 245K following close behind. Surprisingly, the 14600K is actually more efficient than the 285K in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition at 1080p, but the 245K still reigns supreme. Sadly for the 285K though, it couldn't achieve double the efficiency of the 1400K, only about 80%. I like this graph quite a bit because you can see that the 14900K's line is basically an exaggerated version of the 285K's line. All of these dips and peaks are visible on the 285K, but the 14900K stretches them out substantially. Air Lake did a little poorer here than usual, but its thermal performance is still decent though. The 285K was 90% more efficient than the 1400K at 1440p with max out settings, which I think we can say is close enough to 100%. The 245K though was barely short of 50% more efficient than the 14600K. The 14900K is even more jumpy with these higher graphics settings, while the 285K stays pretty calm. Again, Air Lake is in the middle of the two Raptor Lake chips. The 285K only manages to be 60% more efficient than the 1400K in Rainbow Six Siege, and the 245K's boost over the 14600K is even lower at 40%. The 245K was able to stay below 50 watts for almost the entire test, which is impressive even if the efficiency isn't all that much better. Meanwhile, the 285K and the 14600K are again hovering around the same region. The 1400K is pretty much alone in respect to temperature, as all the other CPUs are within a degree of each other. The 285K is able to improve its efficiency over the 1400K to about about 70% at 1440p with the Ultra preset, but that's still shy of 100%. The 245K registered a larger improvement of 60% over the 14600K from 40%. The 285K consumes just a tad less than the 14600K did, and the 245K is able to hang around the 50 watt region. Not bad. The 245K was coolest this time around, just barely, and the 285K wasn't far behind. Goes without saying that the 1400K remains the hottest. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, the 285K is only about 60% more efficient than the 1400K, and the 245K is merely 40% more efficient than the 14600K. The built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider has some loading screens, hence big spikes and dips in a couple places. Anyways, nothing we haven't already seen in other games is happening here. The 285K manages to be the coolest this time, and it's the 245K that's the odd one out, other than the 1400K that is. The 285K did improve its lead over the 1400K to 70% after switching the 1440p, but that's still not 100%. The 245K barely improved its lead over the 14600K at all. All CPUs consumed more power at 1440p, rather than less, but the shape of the lines and the hierarchy remains mostly the same. This chart is pretty notable for the 1400K exceeding 60 degrees again. It's a hot chip. Finally, we're at our last game, The Witcher 3. The 285K was just as efficient as the 14600K and almost 80% more efficient than the 1400K. The 245K was in turn only about 50% more efficient than the 14600K. This is a pretty interesting chart since the 1400K has lots of movement while the other three CPUs really don't. The 1400K yet again surpasses 60 degrees and the other CPUs are a touch more hot than in other games. With the RT Ultra preset and the resolution turned up to 1440p, only the 245K is delivering at least one frame per watt. Here, the 285K is 95% more efficient than the 1400K, which just about meets Intel's claim, though the 245K is only about 50% more efficient than the 14600K. Nothing stands out too much about this chart at this point, but it's still good to see the 245K barely going past 60 watts. No surprises when it comes to thermals either, except maybe for CPUs not being quite as hot as you'd expect from the efficiency and power data. To end things off, we also saw how much power these chips consume at idle. Now, the Air Lake CPUs did consume significantly less than the Raptor Lake chips on a percentage basis, but in absolute values, it's only a few watts here or there. Still, lower idle power draw is good and helps keep the cooler quieter. So, Intel claims Air Lake is twice as efficient as Raptor Lake. Let's be generous and say that they specifically mean the 285K and the 1400K. In the 11 games we tested, the 285K was twice as efficient as the 1400K in just 5. That's really not a great result considering Intel said same performance at half the power. In the three places in the slide deck where Intel made these claims, only one of these instances had an up 2 attached to it, and I actually missed it the first time because you could barely even see it. 
Granted, there were a few games where the 285K was about 80 to 90% more efficient than the 1400K, but there were also instances where it was only just like 50% more efficient. Though it is good that the 285K's power behavior is more like the 14600K than it is the 1400K. The 1400K was regularly between like 100 and 200 watts, sometimes even above 200 watts in certain cases, but the 285K rarely ever went above 100 watts. Meanwhile, the 245K was only about 50% more efficient than the 14600K, though that is still a pretty decent result, I suppose. Uh, the 245K, more importantly, I think, only needed about 50 to 60 watts in most games to perform like or even better than the 14600K. It's been a while since we've seen a mid-range unlock Intel CPU only need about that much power. In Cinebench 2024's multi-threaded test, we saw the CPUs behave when pushed to the limit. While the 1400K pretty much always needed its entire power limit of 253 watts, the 285K didn't even hit 250, it was mostly hovering around uh, 220. They could have reduced the TDP on this chip and it would have performed about the same. In respect to efficiency in Cinebench, the 245K and the 285K were only ahead of their predecessors by about 50%, but that's not too bad. Overall, the efficiency gain is good, it's just not as much as Intel made it out to be. And I did expect more out of Air Lake considering that it uses a 3 nanometer node when Raptor Lake was on 10 nanometer. That, that's a big difference. The difference is comparable to the one AMD made by going from 7 nanometer on Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 5000 to 4 nanometer on Ryzen 9000. Though, to Intel's credit, AMD did do that over multiple generations, while Intel did this in just a single generation. Of course, lower power also meant lower temperatures for Air Lake. The 1400K in games could easily hit 60 Celsius, and it was rarely ever found below 50. By contrast, the 285K rarely exceeded 50, and sometimes was just a hair over 40. The 245K and 14600K were also in that 40 to 50 Celsius range. The multi-threaded test in Cinebench 2024 also showed that the new Air Lake chips were much cooler than the Raptor Lake models. Just as a reminder, we use Corsair's H70i IQ Link cooler, which has a 420mm radiator equipped to it. You can't really get a bigger radiator than that, and the 1400K might have struggled if we used a weaker cooler, judging by these results where it had pretty much the best cooler you could ask for uh, without going into custom liquid cooling. That's one of the key benefits of lower power consumption. You can use a weaker cooler without compromising on performance. The 245K would be perfect to pair with a mini ITX size cooler, and after some tweaking, the 285K might also work out too. Now, does all this power and thermal stuff make up for the Core Ultra 200 series shortcomings? Uh, no, not really, and I don't think that should be a surprising conclusion. It doesn't really do anything to help with price or the performance or the possibility that LGA 1851 might not get Intel's next generation of CPUs. Also, Intel didn't exactly deliver that 100% efficiency boost that it claimed, which is just not great. Strangely enough, if you look at the footnotes, this same performance at half the power efficiency claim is actually made in respect to Cinebench 24's multi-threaded test, which as you saw, only showed about a 50% efficiency boost, which is really at the low end. But if you look at the fine print, you'll see that Intel says the 2A5K at 125 watts rather than 250 watts, while the 1400K was tested at the normal 253 watts, which is presumably how Intel found this doubling of efficiency in Cinebench 2024. Now, I actually only noticed this about the time that I was finalizing the script for this video, which made me realize that when Intel says same performance half the power, they literally mean the 2A5K and the 1400K perform the same if you set the 2A5K's power to half of that at the 1400K because uh, 125 is about half of 203 watts, the power limit for the 1400K, which is, that's not really how things should work when you claim stuff like that because who is going to do that? Who is going to set the 2A5K's TDP to 125 watts? I don't think anyone's gonna do that. <laughs> But that still doesn't really make any sense because the 285K never exceeded 125 watts in games, so this claim doesn't really make any sense, at least when you apply it to games. It's like the average is probably somewhere around 70 to 80% more efficient, uh, which you can't really condense into a nice little sentence like same performance at half the power. So I, I think Intel really just based this off of like a really weird and specific test that they conducted in Cinebench, I, I guess because it looked good. I, I don't get it, but that's marketing for you. And although we didn't test them, Ryzen 9000 CPUs offer a similar level of efficiency according to other reviews. I did plan on testing our 9700X and 9900X, but without the 9950X, which we do not have, I don't think the data would have been that useful and I don't think it would have made that much sense to include. Also, this video was kind of late coming out. We've delayed it a couple times, so uh, we just wanted to get it out as soon as we possibly could, even if it meant that uh, you know we're missing a little bit of data. 
That all being said, it's good that Air Lake is significantly more efficient than Raptor Lake. And when this gaming performance patch comes out, that whole same performance that has the power claim might actually apply in a lot more games than it did this time around. Anyways, that's all we have for you. If you liked our benchmarking analysis, please like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified when we upload. If you really like what we do, please support us on Patreon. A link is in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.